Hello. Welcome to today's Tech Leader Power Lunch. Today, we're going to be focused on scaling your independent consulting business and income to the levels that you want. So you don't have to constantly be thinking, should I go back to corporate or not, if you don't want to. And for those of you who might not be in independent consulting roles at the moment, stay tuned because um, I will explain to you how this applies to you as well here in a couple of slides. So um, stay tuned because it applies whether you're in an, a consulting business or not. So today we're going to leave the lunch with nine ingredients to scale your IC business or your career. Uh, um, from a uh, spoiler alert perspective, how it applies to you, the nine ingredients to scale your IC business or career, the formula, formula you can use to ensure that you're never needing to fall back on corporate as a fallback plan where you don't wanna go, um, assuming that's you. And then the third bucket here is I'm gonna share with you um, the two-part formula that I use this week to get more done in less time so you don't have to sacrifice because I know for so many of us who have full-time jobs or who are working in a consulting capacity, there's always more that needs to be done than we have time for. And so I wanna share with you um, what this two-part formula looks like because it was a game changer for me this week. And so that you will have that actionable uh, takeaway that's really easy to implement uh, here in a few slides. So with that, let's dive in. I'm always a trigger finger on the mouse. If we haven't met yet, I am Melissa Lieberman. I am a career and business coach who is an expert in helping tech leaders and tech consultants achieve their goals, their big professional goals. We have one chance at this, my friends, depending on what your theory, you know, what your viewpoints are. But let's just assume we have one chance at this. You shouldn't have to settle. You shouldn't have to take less than what you're capable of. And my goal for you is, and for me and for all of us, is to get help you get to the point where you are achieving what you think you are capable of and even more. And that's what I do as a coach. And that's what my goal is for these lunches. So with that in mind, let's dive in. So I told you I would explain to you how this topic applies to everyone. So that's what this is focused in on. This topic applies, obviously, based on the title, to existing independent consultants who are ready and trying to grow their business, both from an income perspective as well as from an impact perspective. The other type of person it applies to is new independent consultants or those who are considering it. It's much better to start your business, your independent consulting business, from a place of really knowing where you want to go versus starting in the beginning and telling yourself you'll figure that out later. And I'm not saying you should implement all of these ideas that I'm going to give you, but at least you have the framework and the structure to know where it is you're heading and you can make decisions that will help you get there versus making decisions that are really short-sighted and then you end up having to rework things later. And then the third type of person that it applies to are those of you who are full-time employees who see the benefit of working on your career, not just in it. We get so distracted by the day-to-day -day that we forget to take a step back and look at our overall career. And then years go by, months and quarters and years go by, and we realize we're not where we thought we would be. And then we feel like we're having to catch up. And it feels like this perpetual cycle. So I assume that you're that because you're here, you're one of these types of people if you're in a full-time role or looking for a full-time role. So think about as I go through these nine ingredients, how each of them applies to you, because there's the same exact concepts that I'm giving from an independent consulting perspective apply to people who have full-time roles. And we oftentimes miss a lot of these really important elements, which suppress our ability to advance in our career. So with that being said, the next question is why think about scaling? If you have a business or a career, which again, you do, you're here, you should be thinking about scaling. The only kind of people who are not thinking about scaling are the ones who are just satisfied with the status quo. And you wouldn't be here today if you were satisfied with the status quo. 
So the question really is, are you committed or not to the business that you have or the career that you have? And I know you are because you're here. So we're just going to assume a yes there and and know that these nine, as a result of those two concepts, that these nine ingredients are really important for you. So I'm going to go into each one in detail. If you have questions and you're here live, you can put them in the Q. Let's organize ourselves a little better than usual. So let's put them in the Q&A box. If you have chatting items and want to talk with each other or say something to me, put it in the chat. I love to hear from you. So I don't catch all of them sometimes, but I'll go back and read them afterwards. So if you're here live, go ahead and put questions in the chat. If you're watching this later on YouTube, you can go, I'm sorry, go ahead and put questions in the Q&A. If you're watching this on YouTube later, you can put questions in the comment and I always try to come back and, and respond to those. Okay, let's dive in. Ingredient number one, are you thinking like the CEO who already has the result? Most people completely miss this step. This is number one for a reason. Are you thinking from the perspective of where you're going? So you're already there and looking back as you're making decisions and operating in your day to day, whether you're at a client and delivering for them, whether you're talking to prospects, whether you're in a sales cycle, whatever it looks like, you're in the mindset of the person who has already accomplished the that place in the future that you're working toward right now and looking back at your current state versus being in the current moment where you are now let's just say the consultant with one with one project and no pipeline and thinking about things as that consultant with one project and no pipeline and making decisions and taking action from the place of where you are now and wishing or wanting you were where you want to be. I know that this is a little bit of a mind meld here, but this is ingredient number one for a reason. The more you can get into the mindset and the, the way of being of your future self, the one who has the results that you want, the more quickly it is that you're going to get where to where you want to be. So think about this purposefully. It doesn't come automatically. If it came automatically, you would already be there. Let me repeat that. It's super important. If you, if that way of thinking as your future self who already has the results was automatic and easy, you would already be there you would already have those results. It's not automatic yet. It can be for sure if you do this purposefully. But this is the key ingredient is making sure that you're purposefully thinking as the person who already is where you want to be and making decisions and taking action from that point of view. For, so think about that from your perspective as you go through your day to day, as you plan ahead as to what you're, what's a priority and what's not, and how you're interacting with the clients, and how you're filling your pipeline or not filling your pipeline, whatever it is. This ingredient is across your entire business, across your entire day to day. If you take nothing away from today, it's working on ingredient number one. I promise you, I fought this for a long time. I'm like, I don't, whatever, I'm just going to work really hard. I'm going to do all these actions. I'm going to get my result. And it was painful. As soon as I started putting in this process, it became so much easier. Not simple, maybe, maybe the opposite. Came, became much more simple and easy. It just took a lot of mental time to continue redirecting until this person became automatic for me. Now I, now I start advancing to the next one. Who's the next future version I wanna be. Okay, ingredient, hopefully that one makes sense. If you have questions, just put them in the Q and A if you're here live or in the comments if you're on YouTube. Ingredient number two, protect your mental energy. Very similar. 
Now, this is really important because a lot of times we think this is happening to us. We think we're stressed, like just sort of arrived out of in the mail. Or we're anxious, it's just our personality. We're insecure. It's just the, the nature of whatever it is that we're doing. Or we feel inadequate. It's just because of some external circumstance. These feelings that drain your mental energy are not happening to you. They are a pri byproduct of the way you're thinking, of the way you're thinking about yourself, the way you're thinking about your circumstances, the way you're thinking about other people, the way you're thinking about your business or your career. That's where these come from. Now, some of that thinking, most of it is on autopilot. It's not like you're purposefully thinking something to feel stressed. But you do have control over it, is my point. To know what those thoughts are that create these feelings and start getting a hold on them because that's what's sapping your mental energy if you don't do that. These feelings, these and others similar to them are indicators that you've got some mental models going on that need investigation. That stuff happening for you on autopilot that's creating stress and anxiety needs to be looked at, needs to be figured out. What, why am I creating stress for myself? Why am I creating anxiety for myself? What am I thinking that's creating these things? Again, they're all on autopilot. So you've got to like slow the internal chat box down and or in slow enough to figure out what that is and then figure out where you want to make adjustments. And if you continue to ignore them, like most of us do, that's where this mental drain comes in. I have to repeat this one more time. Your stress is not coming from your job. Your stress is not coming from your client. Your stress is not coming from your job search. Your stress is coming from the way that you're thinking about those activities and yourself in those activities. And it's all mostly on autopilot, things you've thought over and over again that just run in sentences in your mind. And the reason why I want to really pick this apart is because that you have control over it. If the equation was my job equals stress, you have no control over that. The equation is my job makes me think some things or my client makes me think, think some things that create stress for me. You have control over that. And that's the equation that you've got to get a handle on in order to protect your mental energy. Ingredient number three, a revenue-focused daily scorecard. Do you ever sit down and really look at your calendar and say, how, how like rate the, the, the time that you're spending? How much does this, how much does the activity that I have on my calendar relate to the goals that I'm trying to achieve? For most of us, the things that are on our calendar reflect what other people's goals are. Take a look at that. And I'll talk more about the schedule here in a minute in ingredient something, seven maybe. Um, but this is really important that you look at your day and the way that you're spending your time and really evaluating are these revenue generating activities either for my literally I invoice for this or this is setting me up for future invoiceable activity so really look at this because most of us don't think about it from this perspective and that's why this is a shift to help you get into that CEO mindset. Ingredient number four, create a consistent flow of leads. Most of us in consulting especially, but even those of you who are in a career, you have a job so you don't even think about, well, I guess I should kind of set myself up in case I don't have this job. I'll just deal with that when it happens or when I want it to happen. No, this is about proactively constantly keeping a hot pipeline so that you do have opportunity 
you're not stuck somewhere working for a client that you don't want to work with or working in a job that you don't like or being stalled in your career because you haven't done this effort to really cultivate the leads that that are important for you to continue advancing in in your consulting business or even in your full-time role this looks and most of us resist this because it feels like i don't have like this is i don't have time for this i have way more pressing things to do and you can think that and operate that way but that's what's keeping you stuck where you are a lot of you tell me how much you regret not putting investment into this investing your time into this area and i'm here to remind you again that you told me that and not to let it slip. I'm not telling you to spend three hours a day doing this, but I am telling you to carve out 30 minutes a day or three hours a week or whatever it is, some amount of time to can create, always have opportunity building for yourself. And know what that process looks like for you. I think that's the other really important um, perspective here is that this is not just a one size fits all. Like, oh, well, in order to create a create a consistent flow of leads and I need to be spending an hour um, on networking calls every day. That's not what it has to look like. There are many, many forms of what this looks like. And you find one that resonates with you, that feels aligned to you, that's a lot easier for you to do than other methods that might be might might not be really geared to what you to what feels aligned to you and your personality for example i would never well i won't say never because that's a bad i have kids i know now not to say never because i've done all the things that i've said i'd never do with respect to the kids so i will not say that but i will say it would be very rare that i would ever want to go to some in-person networking thing i like i feel so awkward there's a lot of reasons that's just not my jam right but I can network and I could tell you eight other ways to to meet people and to create, you know, figure out what's going on with them and how I could help them and filling the value bank. If you've watched any of my prior videos on how to create a value bank that maybe someday returns returns to you in some form or fashion. So this is a really important area not to neglect. Let me check the time. Keep keep. Uh, diving into these I, um, because how, uh, they're all so important. I'm going to talk a little faster, though. OK, uh, my honest and aside, my husband was watching one of these the other day because he needed he wanted to learn one of the topics, which was really fun. But he told me I talk like an auctioneer, so <laughs> which I do, which was kind of intentional. We'll see when you, when I launch the podcast, if you um, listen it at one X or one point five or two, most of the ones I listen at one point five. But Anyway, okay, I digress. Ingredient number five, a sales process that converts. Do you have a repeatable sales process where you really are able to gather client needs and develop proposals and follow up and close? And that's an intentional process that's proactive versus you kind of making it up on the fly. And do you understand your close rate and why it is what it is and how you can, what you're working toward to improve it? That's what a scalable sales engine looks like. Ingredient number six, do you have compelling productized services? Do you know what your problem, what the problems are that you solve for your customers? And can you articulate them in a compelling way? Have you centered your services around the benefits to your end clients versus the features of what you deliver? A lot of us fall into this trap. And for those of you who don't yet have an IC business, this is a, um, a little bit of a caution. Don't go diving into this feeling like you need all of these things in order to be successful. The best way to figure out how to productize your services is to go have some services first and then figure out the themes of what you want to deliver, what you're really good at delivering, what types of clients you want to deliver to, and then use those three or four projects under your belt to figure out what ingredient six is going to look like. Know that you want to get there, but know that it's actually a detriment if you think you need that first before you dive in. I'm going to put that as a caveat on that slide because it's really, really important as a nuance. 
Ingredient number seven, repeatable delivery systems. Do you have repeatable systems that deliver the outcomes and services that your clients expect and beyond what they're expecting? Have you leveraged automation and tools that could streamline and simplify what you do? I'll share a quick one that I just, um, my coach actually keeps reminding me, hey, Melissa, why didn't you do this? I'm like, damn, I'm still in my um, old way of thinking. But this tool saved my, saved my, saved me this week. Um, it's called otter.ai. And I just go in and, and, uh, and I just voice record all of my thoughts. In this case, I was writing an ebook. Just went in and voice recorded all of my thoughts. It took maybe like 30 minutes to, to put it down all of the thoughts that ended up in a 25 page book. And then it transcribes all of them for you. And so then you just have all of that that you can edit and adjust. So that's my tip, tip secret tip for the week um, from an automation perspective. The other component here is consistently looking for opportunities to delegate, defer, and delete. So many of us go through life and through our career and through our business just doing what it is that we did before. That's why I was about to write the ebook, like typing it out by hand, which would have literally probably taken me eight hours to do. The whole thing ended, with that recording ended up taking like three. Revisit, rethink things. And so that, I'll just touch on that really quickly. The, I, I told you I would tell you the two-part formula to get more done in less time. And that's what it is. Ha asking yourself, how can I make this simpler? How can I make this easier? And number one, that relies on you not thinking things have to be hard in order to be valuable. So that is a prerequisite for sure. And number two, the prerequisite is thinking that things can be easier, believing that things can be easier. So you unlock that, open up your mind to a lot of other possibilities you would never have considered otherwise. So that is the secret formula to getting more done in less time. How can I make this easier on myself? From the place of hard isn't valuable and easy is an option all of the time. Okay, ingredient number eight, are you running your 24 seven, your calendar like a CEO? Look at your calendar like I was referencing a little bit earlier. Does it reflect that of a business owner or does that reflect that of someone who has a client or someone else setting their priorities? This person knows their priorities. They know their standards of how they operate. So when someone asks them to divert their attention or someone asks them to shift gears and, and do a deliverable that wasn't asked for before, but it's an emergency, they know what their standard is answer is for that. They know what their decision criteria is to decide whether the answer is yes or the answer is no or the answer is yes, but. They've set boundaries both for themselves, their clients and others in order to protect their priorities based off of these standards or you could call it like a protocol, how I'm gonna handle when things try to disrupt me. A lot of times we try to manage the disruptions. Oh, I, if I could just get to the place where I have fewer disruptions, guess what? That's not gonna happen. You're not gonna to get to the place where there's fewer disruptions. So instead of trying to solve that problem, and of course you can reduce them, I'm sure in some areas, right? But in the large part, people are going to keep acting the way they are, asking you for things that are, they are important to them and wanting you to change your priority to meet what they need. And you get to decide how you're gonna handle that. The problem isn't to be solved of getting them to change, it's you deciding how you're going to react when they want you to. And then finally, I, oh, that kind of leads into this last bullet, right? How much are you, purposefully thinking what you're going to adjust for based on those standards versus what most of us do, which is just reacting on autopilot. Oh, someone so came in my office, I better, I'm gonna have to redirect, right? 
so-and-so sent me a slack. I better look over there instead of at what I was doing. All, I mean, we could go on and on, right? There's so many distractions. Finally, number nine, are you running? So that was about your schedule and your 24 seven. Ingredient number nine is, are you running your business like a CEO? Same thing could be for your career, right? What are your financial targets? Do you have financial processes? I will admit, I just got this set up in January for me. I've been in business for almost nine years. It's not good. <laughs> but I have it set up now, and this is such a stark difference to, well, I'm not going to say I didn't have financial targets in the past because I definitely had that, but I definitely did not have financial processes beyond very rudimentary things to figure out if I was meeting those processes or not. Usually it was something my coach asked me and then I would answer versus having a true financial process where I know what my targets are. I know what, I know what my revenue targets are. My expense targets are on a monthly, quarterly, annual basis. And I have a, a monthly review process set up and all of the mechanics behind that in order to make sure that I've got my eye on this as a business owner. I have a bookkeeper who I'm, in a way I'm accountable to. We go over this every month. It keeps me thinking like a CEO, not just like, oh, I hope there's money in the bank. And then you're adjusting and pivoting proactively as the norm, not the exception. Your reactions are the exception, not the norm. All right, my friends. Don't forget about the podcasts. It will be coming out in April. I'll tell you a month. I don't have a day yet. In fact, it's actually very hard to say a day because of Apple, but that's a whole nother matter. So if you would like to be the first to know about different things around the podcast, you can go subscribe here. It's not going to send you a bunch of other emails. It's just going to send you more podcast specific insider information.